and say, Thus saith the Lord, let my people go. Amen. Amen. And if you refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite your entire land with frogs. And the river shall swarm with frogs, which shall go up and come into your house, into your bedchamber, on your bed, upon your people, in your ovens, in your kneading bowls, <laughs> and into your dough. God's painting a picture here. Frogs everywhere. <laughs> you know, if you have misery in your life, it's everywhere you go. <laughs> Frogs, <laughs> self-pity frogs, <laughs> anger frogs, bitterness frogs, hateful frogs. Come on, are you with me out there? Yeah. When are you for going to forgive the people that hurt you? Yeah. When are you going to stop saying it's too hard, yeah. it's too much, it's not fair? Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. Isaiah 61, 1 through 3. These scriptures are just so wonderful. Now this is Isaiah prophesying about Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed and qualified me to preach the gospel of good tidings to the meek, the poor, and the afflicted. You guys know that Jesus didn't go to seminary. I didn't either. And I claim the same thing that Jesus claimed. I am qualified because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the meek, the poor, and the afflicted. Now, I didn't say he didn't study. He studied all the time, and I'm sure he studied with learned men. But I'm just trying to make a point that if you missed out on a little education, that doesn't mean that God can't use you. God can anoint you to do unbelievable things. His anointing is His power. It's a gift of the Holy Spirit that comes to you and enables you to do whatever God has asked you to do. Let me tell you something. You are a miracle waiting to happen. He has sent me to preach good tidings to the meek, the poor, and the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up and to heal the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to the physical and spiritual captives and the opening of the prison and of the eyes of those who are bound. So here it is. The prison doors are opened. And I'm hoping to open your eyes tonight by the word of God to see it. Because when you see it, when you see it and you say, I don't have to live like that anymore. I don't have to be trapped in my past. I don't have to feel that I'm worthless because my mother told me I was when I was 10. I don't have to feel like it's my fault that my neighbor abused me. I don't have to live my life full of hatred and bitterness. This is a new day. The mercy of God is new every day. And today's a new beginning for me and a new beginning for every one of you and a new beginning for every one of you watching by television. You know, we love all you guys that watch by TV. You're amazing. Thank you so much for watching my program. And I hope and pray that it heals you, that the Word of God heals you in every area of your life. The opening of the prison and of the eyes of those who are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the year of His favor. And the day of the vengeance of our God. I love favor. That means that God makes things happen for you and you don't deserve them. You're just like, wow. And I love this thing about the vengeance of our God because that means that you can enter rest and God will deal with your enemies. He said, I'm anointed to comfort all who mourn. 
to grant consolation and joy to those who mourn in Zion, to give them an ornament of beauty instead of ashes. Now, you know, we got a lot of men here tonight, and you might think, eh, beauty for ashes, that's a little girly, I don't, you know. Well, let me tell you guys, you can use a little beautiful too once in a while. <laughs> Amen. How many are down with that tonight? You'll go along with that, okay? So you're in, the, you're in the beauty shop for your soul tonight. <laughs> beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise instead of a heavy burden and a failing spirit, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. In verse 7 and 8, kept me going a long time. Instead of your farmer's shame, you shall have a twofold recompense. That means reward or, or payback. <laughs> Instead of dishonor and reproach, your people shall rejoice in their portion. Now get this, therefore in their land, not when they die and go to heaven, but in their land, they shall possess double what they forfeited and everlasting joy shall be theirs. So guess what you got coming? Double for your trouble. Not double trouble. Double blessings for your farmer trouble. You say, well, is there anything that I need to do? Yeah, the Holy Ghost will give you some instructions. <laughs> He'll lead you and guide you. The Holy Spirit is our counselor. And he knows exactly what to do when so we get all put back together and it doesn't crush us in the meantime. Beauty for ashes, double for your trouble. Why? Because I, the Lord, love justice. I love that. God is a God of justice. You know what that means, that God is a God of justice? It simply means that he makes everything that's wrong right. Beautiful, isn't that beautiful? Now, if you're meek, poor, and afflicted, if you're wounded, if you feel lost, if you've been messed around, if you've messed your life up, you do not have to shrink back in shame and fear because you are just the person that Jesus came for. He came for those that were sick, not those that were well. You know, there are many types of abuse. Just want to go over this quickly. There's sexual abuse, verbal abuse, mental abuse. There's even spiritual abuse. Some people even get under spiritual leaders that are abusive. There's all kinds of abuse, emotional abuse. There's verbal abuse, words spoken to us that damage things. The Bible says the power of life and death is in the tongue. How many of you have experienced more than your share of verbal abuse in your life? See, that, that's just like way too many people. The devil is alive and well on planet Earth. Has anybody noticed that? But I'll tell you somebody else that's got something to say to you. That's your heavenly father. And now, this is what you gotta learn how to believe. It's not what mama said to you that matters, it's what Father God says to you that matters. It's not what daddy said to you that matters, it's what Father God says to you that matters. It's not what your teacher said, or your classmate, or your brother, or your sister. Even if your parents did not love you at all, let me encourage you tonight that, and please don't take this wrong, but it doesn't have to matter because God loves you. God loves you, and he loves you forever, and perfectly, and completely, and unconditionally. To be honest, I can, I can say that my parents didn't love me. I mean, my mother loved me, but you don't, you don't really love a child if you're going to abandon them <laughs> in a situation like that. Now, she had weaknesses. She had fear. I understand all that. I have nothing against her. But I never got the kind of love 
that a child should have. We should learn about Father God's love from our parents. But we don't. But it's not too late for you to start right now. I don't care if you're sitting in here tonight and you are 75. You can start tonight receiving the love of God. Now, the love of God is what heals our wounded soul. And so I'm going to show you a scripture in Ephesians 3.16 that I want you to begin to pray over your life every day. Ephesians 3.16. I pray this almost every morning. You know, when you start speaking the word of God out of your own mouth, you start believing it and speaking it out of your own mouth, you start praying this word back to God. He's honor bound <laughs> to fulfill his own promises if you believe them. Amen. So you say, Father, I believe this and I receive it today. May he grant you out of the rich treasury of his glory to be strengthened and reinforced with mighty power in the inner man by the Holy Spirit himself indwelling your innermost being and personality. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost, come and get in my personality. Come today, Lord, and indwell my personality because I'm not going to be mean. I'm going to be sweet. I'm not going to be sad. I'm going to be joyful. I'm not going to be mad. I'm going to be glad. I'm not going to be full of self-pity today. I'm going to get myself out of this house and go help somebody that needs help. Come Holy Ghost and indwell my personality. How many of you will start to pray that every day? Every day. Well, I believe it's time to make a decision to walk out of bondage, leave the frogs behind, and find the freedom that Christ died for you to have. Don't live in your past pain for one more day. Today we're offering you an entire action plan on beauty for ashes, how you can trade in those ashes and receive back from Christ a beautiful life. It includes CDs, DVDs, and a personal application workbook. Don't miss this opportunity to learn all you can about the life of freedom that Jesus is offering to you today. Escape the prison of your past with the Beauty for Ashes Action Plan. With over four hours of Joyce's teaching on CD and DVD, a personal application workbook and journal, the Beauty for Ashes Action Plan will help you change your perspective on the past and live a life as God intended, filled with joy and purpose. It's available today for your donation of $35 or more. Contact us right now, 1-800-727-9673. Coming up Friday. We help them see themselves the way that, that God sees right. them and identify with who they are in Christ and understand that their past does not have to destroy their future. And you are one of the best examples we use about that, that no matter what you've been through, that you can overcome, that you don't have to stay yeah. a victim. You can be a victor and you can let your, your testimony, uh, you can go out and share your story and the very thing that the enemy wanted to use to destroy exactly. you. You can help other people. I felt completely unlovable. I needed to make a fresh start. We felt like there was no hope. But my story. My story. My story isn't over. And neither is yours. God can still do something extraordinary in your life. In my life. No matter who you are. What you did. Or what's happened before. You can begin again. It's never too late. You can begin again. Available now from Joyce Meyer Ministries or wherever books are sold. The proceeding was paid for by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries.